Hey everybody, this is Wyatt with Michael Lab Solutions, and today we're in the lab and we're going to show you how to make a monotub. Behind us in the flow hood are some of the tools we're going to use and the monotub. So let's jump right in and uh, show you all the materials you'll need. So here we are making our monotub. This is the equipment that you're going to be using. The first thing we need is a tub. We use a clear plastic Sterilite tub. This one is a 58 quart and you can get it at Walmart for about $5. I find that this size or a little bit bigger works the best depending on your space that you have at home. The other items we will need are a drill with a hole saw. Uh, we're using a one and a half inch hole saw here, but uh, depending on how big your tubs are, you can use a little bit bigger. I wouldn't go too much smaller or you can use more. We're going to need polyfill to fill the holes after we drill them into the tub and this will act to um, allow air exchange without allowing a lot of uh, microbes and dust and stuff to enter into the tub. You're going to need a black plastic bag, garbage bag, that you'll cut and line the bottom of the tub with and that's to keep uh, from light penetrating the sides of your block um, and uh, prevent pinning. Then when you're ready to uh, fill your tub with substrate, uh, you want to clean it with alcohol. So we have some alcohol here. And then over here we have some tape that we use to hold up the plastic bag once we put it in. A knife and also a pen to write the date and what kind of mushrooms you have in there and just for general information. So on these tubs, um, there is a line about a quarter of the way up. I like to fill my tubs not more than about a third of the way up. Depending on what species you're growing, they can get quite tall. And you don't want to fill up too much substrate. I mean, I like to get one big first flush and then maybe a second and third kind of smaller flush. So the more substrate you put in, the longer it will take to colonize and uh, the longer it will grow, obviously, but the more time there are chances for contaminants to get in. So I like to keep my tubs about a third of the way full, maybe a little bit higher than this line. So I'm going to drill my holes maybe a little bit above that right here. So, so we take our drill and uh, you want to go really slow because these things have a tendency to crack if you go too fast. So here we go, we're going to drill our hole. So now we're going to go around to the rest of the tub and do all the sides. I'll keep one kind of high like this and then uh, put, you know, like two a little bit lower on the sides. It's best to do this outside. As you can see, there's a, a lot of, uh, you know, um, chattel and stuff that um, gets thrown around so you know if you want to keep your lab clean I usually do it outside but for purposes here we're doing it under the flow hood where there's some light so now I'll do a second hole a little bit higher then I'll do a third hole kind of down below This is something you could play around with at home and kind of find out what works best for you and what uh, you know your grow room space is like. Okay, so there we go. We have our tub and all our holes. In it, um, the next phase, we're going to take our knife and cut around these edges to kind of clean them up so there's not all this chafe and chattel there. So now we're going to take our knife and we're going to clean up all the edges of the holes here just so there's not all this uh, little burrs and stuff. So we take our knife and just easily go around and cut it off. Simple.
And there we go. So now that we have the holes drilled and cleaned up, we're going to cut a piece of plastic, black plastic, and line the bottom of the tub. This will keep light from hitting the side of our block and uh, discourage pinning. So all your mushrooms will grow off the surface of your substrate or casing. So you don't need a lot of plastic, you just need it to be dark enough so it doesn't allow a lot of light to penetrate through. I like to use uh, contractor's bags and to make them last I cut them in half. Uh, they're a pretty uh, thick mill plastic and uh, they won't allow any light through with just one layer. So I just cut along with scissors along the edges and then I'll kind of lay it over the tub to see um, how big I need it and I'll try to get as many pieces I can out of one piece of plastic. Um, these things could be a little bit expensive and if you use just regular black garbage bags they uh, have a tendency to be kind of thinner and allow light into um, through the, the plastic. So here we have cut open now and uh, let's just lay it over our tub and kind of see. You know, usually I'll cut off this thing uh, just so you don't have big pieces sticking up. Um, so it'll be about that big. We'll see how many I could get out of this. It looks like I could get four pieces out of this uh, one plastic bag. So I'm just going to cut it down the middle here and then I'm going to line it. So here we are about to line our tub with black plastic and in keeping with good sterile technique we want to keep everything really clean and free for, of germs and um, other airborne particulates. So we're going to take our alcohol here and we're just going to give it a quick spray and a quick scrub um, just to make sure everything's all sterile and clean. Uh, you'll do this again but once the lining is in you're not going to be able to clean the bottom of the tub so I always do it beforehand just give it a quick rub and then I'll take my black plastic and I'll usually just kind of give it a good spray and give it a wipe down you know hopefully take them right out of the bag or the box of, of bags so you know it's clean but you never know and it's always good to be as cleanly as possible you don't want to do all this work and then have um, your whole substrate get contaminated and you lose uh, your whole crop, you know. So just keep everything clean. I use alcohol. Other people use uh, bleach mixture or you know ammonium or any kind of sterilizing um, liquid or anything will work. Just keep it clean. So now that everything's sterile, we're going to take our black plastic and we're going to line the bottom of the tub. And it's only going to go up about you know a third. Um, or a quarter of the tub, however much you're filling it up. And if it's kind of messy, you can, you know, fold it under, do whatever it takes to get a nice kind of seal in there. And uh, if it reaches up above your holes, just fold it over right there. So I take my tape. This is some um, tape from like a medical kit. It's breathable. Um, and it uh, stays sterile. So we're just going to kind of tape that up and keep it from folding over and falling around when we're working in there and we're putting our substrate in. Okay, so now that we have our tub lined, we have our black plastic in there everything's sterile. Uh, we're going to take our polyfill and we're going to plug up these holes here. Alright, so now that we have our holes drilled and our tub lined with uh, black plastic, we're going to take the polyfill and we're going to plug up all the holes. This will allow gas exchange um, within and without the tub while keeping out particulates and contaminants. So you want to get it tight in there so it's not going to come out and then you can use uh, the breathable medical tape again to tape over it if necessary. Um, so we just take enough polyfill. It's super cheap. You can get it at any craft store. Uh, Walmart has it. And I think it's about three to five bucks. So 
you know, you can be liberal with it. You don't want um, it coming out really, so that's why I use the tape sometimes. Uh, one guy had a video where he had it, I don't know, it was uh, really nice and scrunched up. It looked like it was uh, melted or something in there, so, you know, it kind of kept in there. But you don't want too much on the inside. I'm just doing it quick. Um, I would maybe take some tape and tape this up because when you have uh, the mushrooms actually growing up, sometimes they can get entangled in this and you'll get polyfill on your mushrooms. And I don't know, I don't really like eating polyfill. I don't know if you do. So this is the basic idea to keep air uh, contaminants out, um, but to still leave, you know, uh, enough airflow and gas exchange to happen. Um, you could add some more holes if you don't feel like you're getting enough air exchange or you can take less if your room, your grow room is really um, circulated with air. But um, our monotub is pretty much ready. Uh, the next step is we're going to be adding our layers of substrate and grain spawn or liquid culture depending on which way you're going. And we're going to line it up to, you know, about the top of this black plastic here, which is about a third of the way through so you want it below your holes um, but you know kind of right there this is Wyatt with Microlab Solutions and uh, this has been a short video on how to make a monotub now the fun part happens where we add substrate and spawn and we get on our way to growing mushrooms at home we hope you've enjoyed this and learned a little bit and make sure to check out all our other videos on YouTube Facebook and our website, michaelabsolutions.com. So thanks guys, and join us again on filling our monotubs and starting to grow fresh mushrooms at home. Aloha.